Lord of all the world, O ineffable God, O creator of the elements, have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, O almighty God, Jesus Christ, Son of the living God. Have mercy upon us. O only begotten of God the Father, O firstborn of the Virgin Mary. Have mercy upon us. O beginning of all things, O completion of the world, O Word of God, have mercy upon us. O way to the heavenly kingdom, O life of all things, O intelligence of the mystic world, have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, O God Almighty, O Holy Spirit, have mercy upon us. O Spirit that is highest of all spirits, O finger of God, have mercy upon us. O protection of all Christians, O comforter of the sorrowful, O clement one, O oh, merciful intercessor, O oh, imparter of true wisdom, O oh, author of the holy scriptures, O oh, ruler of speech, O oh, spirit of wisdom, of understanding, O spirit of counsel, O spirit of strength, have mercy upon us. O spirit of knowledge, O spirit from whom is ordered every lofty thing, have mercy upon us. O Holy Spirit, you rule all created things, visible and invisible. Have mercy upon us. O Almighty God, the Heavenly Father, and the Only Begotten Son. Have mercy upon us. O Father, O Son, O Holy Spirit, things for you, O oh God, to whom be glory and honor. Good morning. Welcome to All Saints on this first Sunday of Lent. We're glad you're here. If you're with us for the first time today, you got a packet as you came into church. The outer part is the announcement sheet, and you can put that away. Inside is the service leaflet. It has all the words of our service today, along with the service music. You will need hymnals for the hymns, and today we are using the blue 1982 hymnal, and that's found in the pew rack in front of you or under your chair. When it comes time for communion, everyone is welcome to receive the sacrament here, and instructions on how to do that are in the leaflet when we get to that part of the service. And now I'd like to dismiss the children to Sunday school, and Molly will lead them out. So please follow Molly. And before we continue our worship, let's just take a deep breath and a moment of silence 
and be aware of the presence of God within and all around. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose blessed Son was led by the Spirit to be tempted by Satan, come quickly to help us who are assaulted by many temptations. And as you know the weaknesses of each of us, let each one find you mighty to save. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings from Scripture. A reading from the book of Genesis. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, as for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, this is a sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. The word of the Lord. suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. 
He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. The word of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. 
Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Gracious God, grant us always to seek the truth, come whence it may, cost what it will. Amen. We begin our season of Lent where we always begin it, in the wilderness. We always start here, in one or another of the Gospels, with Jesus' baptism and then his time in the wilderness. Wilderness. In the Greek, the word is eremon. Eremon. It sounds like the wind moaning through the rocks. Eremon. An empty place, a desolate place, without human comforts or conveniences. Eremon. A wild place where humans travel at their peril. Because Mark tells us there are dangers here. The devil is in the wilderness. There are wild beasts. Eremon. What will Jesus find there in those 40 days? What will we find there in these 40 days of Lent? What will happen to us in the wilderness, in the Eremon? Jesus doesn't go to the wilderness of his own accord or his own volition. He's not planning a backpacking trip in the wilderness to get away from it all. No, the spirit, the same spirit who just dive-bombed him at his baptism and filled him with light and life and love, that same spirit drives Jesus into the wilderness. The Greek is even stronger. The spirit tosses him out into the wilderness. Jesus didn't ask to go to the wilderness. Maybe he didn't even have it on his mind when he went for John's baptism in the River Jordan, but the wilderness was his destination anyway, and out he went into the emptiness, the desolation, the silence, and the danger. Eremon. The Spirit tossed him out into the Eremon. And things happened to him out there. We don't know much detail from Mark's gospel. We only get three short clauses. Tempted by Satan, he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. So he wasn't alone there in the Eremon. He had company, Satan, wild beasts, angels. Jesus was tossed out by the Spirit of God into the wilderness to spend 40 days with Satan, wild beasts, and angels. And what a Lent that might be, wouldn't it? 40 days in the wilderness with Satan, wild beasts, and angels. Well, I'd like to suggest that these brief sentences from Mark's Gospel can help us engage the next six weeks, the next 40 days between now and Easter, in a new way, in a helpful way. They can provide a template for how to face the days ahead as we walk with Jesus to the cross and the empty tomb. They can help us see how to survive, even how to thrive, even in the midst of the Eremon, even in the vast spaces of the wilderness. So let's start with the wilderness, that desolate and empty space. Lent is supposed to be a kind of wilderness experience, a time of deprivation and testing, a stripped-down six weeks that draws us closer to God because we are choosing to, or maybe we are not even able to, rely upon ourselves. If Ash Wednesday works right, or if this first Sunday of Lent works right, it should feel like each of us is being driven out into our Lenten disciplines 
into our fasting and study and prayer, into our acts of charity and kindness, and into our repentance and our forgiveness. And some of us need a wilderness just like that, because we have grown numb or forgetful, because we have grown distant from God, because our lives are too full of work, of busyness, of fear and food and technology and news, so full that we fail to hear the voice of God. We need to clear out the crap, clear out the clutter, wake up, look around, find ourselves in an empty space where we can hear the voice of God murmuring in the wind, Eremon. But some of us are already in the wilderness, and for some that wilderness can get really personal. When life becomes a wilderness, that's because there are real dangers, real threats, cancer, chronic illness, unemployment, the loss of a loved one through death or divorce, a child struggling or sinking, and it can feel like you have been tossed out or driven out into a wilderness you never looked for, a wilderness you never asked for. But there you are, and it is desolate and wild and barren. Eremon. And we also walk through the wildernesses of this world, another school shooting, another chorus of voices saying, enough is enough this time, and the fear that enough is not enough, and that once again lives have been lost for no reason, and once again nothing will really change. We walk through the wildernesses in our community, the desolation left behind by Larry Nasser, the turmoil at the university, the voices of survivors still ringing in our ears, and we walk through the wildernesses of our civic life with the intransigence of our leaders, the divisive, even cruel rhetoric, the impasses on everything from immigration to health care. Chaotic, dangerous, depressing, Eremon. But wilderness is necessary. Wilderness is needful. Whether we choose it by committing to a holy and purposeful Lent, or whether we are just stuck in it, and it has nothing to do with the six weeks between now and Easter, still, wilderness is where God sends God's beloved to learn and to be tested, but also to be cared for very tenderly. The wilderness is where we learn how much we need God. Because look at the rest of the story. There is Satan in that wilderness. Oh my goodness, there is Satan, the adversary, the tempter, the enemy of God. Not a little cartoon devil with a pitchfork, but a force of seduction and destruction and death. And that adversary comes in all sizes and shapes. The adversary can be as small as the little voice that tells you your prayers are not important and you don't really need to pray them. The tempter could be as sly as the murmur that says, nothing you do really changes anything, nothing you do really matters. The force can be the powerful emptiness that compels broken people to do horrible, horrible things. It can be the impending threat of death, emotional death, spiritual death, even actual physical death. And there is nothing that can deal with that adversary except the grace and love and power of God. And in the other Gospels that tell about Jesus' temptations, Jesus always turns his answer back to God. You can't live on bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God, he says. You must not test the Lord your God, he says. Get out Satan, he says, because you must worship the Lord your God and serve only God. It's never Jesus' willpower that saves him. It's always his complete and total reliance on God. It's his confidence that God will see him through. So yes, there is Satan in the wilderness, but there are also wild beasts in the wilderness, and I love the wild beasts. 
Because just when I think that the wilderness is an empty and desolate place with only rocks and sand and stunted trees and the devil of a tempter to deal with on top of it, the wild beasts remind me that no, there is life in that wilderness. The wild beasts live there all the time. They were not driven into the Aramon, they make their home there. They belong there. And so there must be more to the wilderness than just wind and rocks and desolation. There must be water to drink and food to eat, plants and seeds and bugs and smaller animals to feed the bigger, wilder ones. There must be a whole living ecosystem there in the wilderness, rich enough to sustain the wild beasts. So it turns out the wilderness is not a dead end. It's a living landscape. So our wilderness, whatever wilderness it is we are walking through, is not a dead end. It's not a barren desolation. It has life if we can look for it, if we can find it. It has water to quench and food to sustain. It has companionship for us to find. It turns out that it's not a place of no hope, but a place where new life can take root and grow. And then in the end, there are angels. There are angels in the wilderness to care for Jesus, and there are angels in the wilderness to care for us too. Angels seen and unseen, spiritual forces of love and mercy and grace and protection surrounding us every day, each step of the way. Bearing us up when we start to dash our foot against the stones in our pathway. Breathing the word of God into our ears to encourage us hiding us in the shadow of their wings. And then there are the living angels, the embodied angels, the human beings who turn up just when we need them, who speak the words we need to hear when we are out of steam and out of hope, who bring us food when we are sick or in grief, who bring us books that show us how to keep going, who text or call or drop a note and say, I'm thinking of you today, I'm praying for you today who listen to our stories and just listen, who speak up against the horrors in the news and say, this is not right, who speak up against the horrors in our personal lives and remind us that this is not right. It is Lent, my brothers and sisters, and perhaps we are heading out into the wilderness by choice, or perhaps we have been tossed out there against our will. But we know that the wilderness has gifts for us. We will be tested. We can't help but be tested, but we will be sustained. Angels will minister to us. Wild beasts will companion us. In the end, it is God who will carry us through. We may be lost in the wilderness, but we are not alone. Never, ever alone. Amen. And now let us proclaim the ancient faith of the church using the Nicene Creed as found in your leaflet. We believe in one God. Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is has seen and unseen, we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternity God of the Father, God of God, light from light, true God from true God. <coughs> Thank <laughs> you.
with the Father and the Son, and His worship and glorified, and has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and we look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. <laughs> Let us pray. Merciful God, uphold us this Lent in self-examination and prayer. We pray, O oh God, help us expand our own self-awareness. Give us a courage, a courageous honesty to explore the inner parts of ourselves that are asking for growth or forgiveness. We pray, O oh God, Help us to fast from negativity, that our words may be kind and true, our thoughts be pure and holy. Create in us a generous heart and a joyful spirit that we may better reflect your love. We pray, O oh God, for your help in restoring covenant community. Mend, O oh Father, the generation's old wounds aching in the hearts of this land, affecting most deeply the indigenous peoples of America and people of African descent whose ancestors were made slaves. Open us to listen, to reconcile with difficult truths, and to make amends. May a great and holy healing of relationship happen here and among the many peoples of the earth. We pray, O oh God, bring us to honor Mother Earth. Help us to, by our living, mirror her fidelity to the whole of life. Stir us to know her body as our own, to protect water and preserve wild spaces to treat animals with dignity, and awaken us to the sacredness, intelligence, and miracle of creation. We pray, O oh God, to be fully conscious of the effects of the consumption economy on the health and well-being of body and soul. Humble us that we might learn from the wise a simpler and gentler way to live again in harmony with nature. Compel decision makers, corporate leaders, politicians, and each one of us to an urgency of will to change. We pray, O oh God, unite us to take responsibility for our collective miscreations and to, together, repair our politics. We pray for an inspired citizenry and for a new imagination to co-create sacred dialogue. We pray especially for Donald, our president, the U.S. Congress, courts, state and local governments, and leaders of tribes, territories, and nations. We pray that the Holy Spirit might be leavened for our souls to embolden the virtuous and enlighten the fearful. We pray, O oh God, hold us and people in churches and faith circles everywhere to commit to daily prayer and meditation. May the fruits of our practice lead to the inward peace which passes all understanding. And may our devotions transform us to reveal a love that is divine. We pray, O oh God, for Howard, Paula, Lynn, Gus, Don, Joe, Tamara, Catherine, Ted, Dorothy, Marty, Emily, Barbara, Caitlin, Matthew, Folu, Dixie Lee, Kevin, Karen, Gordon, Rosemary, Jean, and for all the suffering. 
We bless and pray for those who have entered eternity. We pray especially for Don Ostring, whose funeral was held here yesterday, and for the victims of the school shooting in Florida. O oh God, you have created all things by the power of your word, and you renew the earth by your spirit. Give now the water of life to those who thirst for you, that they may bring forth abundant fruit in your glorious kingdom, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. <laughs> Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have not done, done. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please greet one another. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Back by popular demand, <laughs> I am Vic Rausch, and I'm Vestry Person of the Day. And you need no reminder that the Vestry is the governing board of our church. If you have any questions about All Saints, please feel free to ask me. Um, if you're visiting with us today, there's a card in, in the pew racks that uh, has space for your name, address, and so forth, so we can uh, send you some things about our church and thank you for being with us today. And we have some announcements. Uh, right after the service, we're having coffee and fellowship and probably some good treats in the undercroft right below this, this area. You can take either sets of stairs. Well, take one, don't take two at the same time. Or there's an elevator over there and take that all the way down. Um, watch for the rice bowl. That's right up here in front. As you pass by, you can uh, put a dollar or a dime or five dollars or whatever, uh, the, the collection will go to support greater action of Greater Lansing and the Advent House. We have a weekly Eucharist with healing prayers during this Lenten season. There's a short Eucharist with a laying on of hands for healing 
in the chapel at 6.30 p.m. every Wednesday. All ages are welcome to this brief but powerful service. We have a baptism preparation class. Parents who want to have their children baptized need to attend a baptism preparation class. This will be offered on Saturday, March 10, from 9 a.m. to noon in the church library. Child care will be provided. Baptism, baptism offered, uh, will be offered at the Easter Vigil, the Easter Family Service, and the Feast of Pentecost. Please RSVP to Pastor Kit in her email address in the bulletin. Adult formation during Lent. Our parish-wide program, Meeting Jesus in John, is underway. During Lent, each of us can be watching the videos, praying and journaling in our prayer journals and meeting weekly in small groups. If you haven't signed up for the videos yet, go to meetingjesusinjohn.org. There's a reference to it in the bulletin. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Vic. And just a note about the small groups. Um, they start today. There is a group uh, for men only that's going to meet in the library at 11.30, and then another group for uh, general population that starts at 11.30 in the lounge. I think there's still time to join those groups. There are groups on Wednesday evening, starting after the, at 7 o'clock after the 6.30 Eucharist. And there is a group at 9 o'clock on Sunday mornings that just started. And there's a group at 6 o'clock on Sunday evenings that will start tonight. So if you haven't sorted yourself into a small group yet, please do. I hope you're watching the videos. Um, they come in your email every day if you've subscribed. And um, I hope you're using your prayer journals. I'm finding mine very powerful. And now walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself as an offering and a sacrifice to God.
we continue with Eucharistic Prayer A as it is printed in your leaflet. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who was tempted in every way as we are, yet did not sin. By his grace we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer for ourselves alone, but for him who died for us and rose again. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us the stay our daily bread, Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast.
These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Receive who you are, become what you see, the body and blood of Christ.
post-communion prayer is on the last panel of your leaflet. Together, let us pray. Oh, are we sending forth? I didn't see the boxes. The boxes weren't there. We are sending forth. Please join me first in sending forth our Eucharistic visitors. Sarah and Pam and Maria and Hank and Terry, in the name of this congregation, I send you forth bearing these holy gifts, that those to whom you go may share with us in the communion of Christ's body and blood. We who are many are one body, because we all share one bread and one cup. And now the post-communion prayer is on the last panel of your leaflet. Together let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Life is short, and we do not have too much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel the way with us. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind. And may the blessing of the one who made us and who loves us and walks the way with us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be upon you and those you love dearly this day and always. Amen.